Hello viewers, welcome to Math Tech. I am Amish Sharma. In this video, we are going to solve questions of 20 to 25 of chapter 4 from the book Contemporary Abstract Algebra by Joseph Gillen. So without a delay, let's start. Question number 20. Suppose that G is an abelian group of order 35 and every element of G satisfies the equation x to the power 35 is equal to identity. Prove that G is cyclic. Does your argument work if 35 is replaced by 33? The following result is very useful to learn in order to solve the question. Result A finite group G is said to be cyclic if G has an element of order equal to order of a group G. Now given G be an abelian group of order 35 such that for all x belongs to G, x to the power 35 is equal to identity. Since for all x belongs to G, x to the power 35 is equal to identity. This implies order of x divide 35. Therefore, the possibility for order of x is 1, 5, 7 and 35. Now, let us assume that G has no element of order 35. Let if possible, all the element other than identity is of order 5. But 34, which is the non-identity element, is not a multiple of 5 of 5, which is equal to 4 which is contradiction that all the non-identity element can have order 5. Now by the similar argument we can show that all the non-identity element cannot have order 7. So G has an element of order both 5 and 7. Let us take order of A is 5 and order of B is 7. This implies A to the power 5 is equal to identity and B to the power 7 is equal to identity. Now AB to the power 5 is equal to A to the power 5 into B to the power 5. Why it is so? Because G is an abelian group which is further written as E into B to the power 5 because A to the power 5 is identity which is further written as B to the power 5 which is not equal to identity. Now A B to the power 7 is equal to A to the power 7 into B to the power 7 which is equal to A to the power 7 into identity which is equal to A to the power 7 which is further written as A square into A to the power 5 which is equal to A square into identity which is equal to A square which is not equal to identity. This implies order of AB is not equal to 5 and order of AB is not equal to 7. This implies order of AB must be 35 which is contradiction because we assume that G has no element of order 35. Therefore, G have an element of order 35. This implies G is cyclic group. Now by using the same argument, if we replace 35 by 33, G will be the cyclic group. In general, if order of G is equal to PQ where P less than Q, P and Q are prime number and P does not divide Q minus 1, then G is isomorphic to ZPQ which is a cyclic group. Question number 21. Let G be a group and let A be any element of G. Part A. If A to the power 12 is equal to identity, what can we say about the order of A? Part B. If A to the power M is equal to identity, what we can say about the order of A? Part C. Suppose that order of G is 24 and G is cyclic. If A to the power 8 is not equal to identity and A to the power 12 is not equal to identity, show that G is generated by A. Now given G be a group and A belongs to G. Part A. Given A to the power 12 is equal to identity, this implies order of A divides 12. This implies the possibility for order of A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. Part B, given A to the power M is equal to identity, this implies order of A divides M. Part C, given G is a cyclic group of order 24 and A belongs to G such that A to the power 8 is not equal to identity and A to the power 12 is not equal to identity. Now we have to show that G is generated by A, that is order of A should be equal to order of G which is 24. Since order of an element divides the order of a group, this implies order of A divide 24. Therefore, possibility for order of A are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12 and 24. Now given A to the power 8 is not equal to identity and A to the power 12 is not equal to identity, this implies order of A cannot be 8 and 12. Now let order of A is 1. This implies A is equal to identity. Now A to the power 8 which is equal to E to the power 8 which is equal to identity which is a contradiction because given that a to the power 8 is not equal to identity, this implies order of a is not equal to 1. Let order of a is 2, this implies a square is equal to identity. 
Now a to the power 8 can be written as a square to the power 4 which is equal to e to the power 4 which is identity which is again contradiction because a to the power 8 is not equal to identity. This implies order of a is not equal to 2. Let order of a is 3. This implies a cube is equal to identity. Now a to the power 12 is written as a cube to the power 4 which is equal to e to the power 4 which is equal to identity which is a contradiction because a to the power 12 is not equal to identity. This implies order of a is not equal to 3. Let order of a is 4. This implies a to the power 4 is equal to identity. Now a to the power 8 can be written as a to the power 4 square which is equal to e square which is equal to identity which is again a contradiction because a to the power 8 is not equal to identity. This implies order of a is not equal to 4. Now let order of a is 6. This implies a to the power 6 is equal to identity. Now a to the power 12 is equal to a to the power 6 square which is equal to e square which is equal to identity which is again a contradiction because a to the power 12 is not equal to identity. This implies order of a is not equal to 6. Therefore order of a is equal to 24. Hence g is generated by a. Question number 22. Prove that a group of order 3 must be cyclic. Let G be a group of order 3. Let G containing the element E, A, B where E is the identity element. Now by the closure axiom, the product of A, B either equal to A or product of A, B is equal to B. This implies B is equal to identity by the cancellation law or A is equal to identity by the cancellation law which is contradiction. Why it is so? Because a group contain only the distinct element and the group has identity element E. Therefore, the product of AB should be equal to identity. This implies A inverse is equal to B. This is known as inverse property. Now, by the closure axiom, if A square is equal to identity, this implies A equal to A inverse, which is again a contradiction because the A inverse is equal to B. Now, again by the closure axiom, if A square is equal to A, this implies A is equal to identity, which is contradiction because a group contain only distinct elements. Therefore, a square should be equal to b. Now, a cube which is written as a into a square which is equal to a b which is equal to identity. This implies order of a is 3. Why it is so? Because a is not equal to identity and a square is also not equal to identity. Since g has an element of order 3 which is equal to order of g, implies g is cyclic group. Hence, group of order 3 is cyclic. In general, if order of g is equal to p where p is prime number, then G is cyclic group. Question number 23. Let Z denote the group of integer under addition. Is every subgroup of Z is cyclic? Why? Describe all the subgroup of Z. Let A be the group element with infinite order. Describe all the subgroup of group generated by A. Since Z is a cyclic group under addition, we know that every subgroup of a cyclic group is cyclic. Therefore, every subgroup of Z is cyclic. All the subgroup of Z are of the form generated by N where N belongs to Z. The subgroup generated by A are of the form subgroup generated by A to the power N where N belongs to Z. Question number 25. For any element A in a group G, prove that subgroup generated by A is a subgroup of centralizer of A. Let G be a group and A belongs to G. We have to show that the subgroup generated by A is a subgroup of centralizer of A. Let B belongs to subgroup generated by A. This implies B is equal to A to the power N for some integer N. Now A into B can be written as A into A to the power N which is further written as A to the power 1 plus N which is further written as A to the power N plus 1 which is equal to A to the power N into A which is equal to BA. This implies B commute with A. This implies B belongs to centralizer of A. This implies the subgroup generated by A is contained in centralizer of A. Now since we know that the subgroup generated by A and the centralizer of A is a subgroup of G and the subgroup generated by A is contained in centralizer of A, this implies the subgroup generated by A is also a subgroup of centralizer of A. Hence the subgroup generated by A is a subgroup of centralizer of A. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you like the content, please do like, share and subscribe my channel. If you have any query, comment me. Thank you very much.